get this question all the time and we wanted to touch base on it and talk to you guys about it. So what can we not travel without? Well, after two years of traveling full time, going on to our third year, there's a lot of things that we've cut out and a lot of things we've included now in this second and third year that we didn't have the first year. This basically based on our experience on things that we realized on the third year that we can't travel without this. So right now we are in South America. We start our trip in Colombia and then Peru and then now and up we are sitting in Chile. But one thing is that um, South America is so well known for Amazon Jungle yeah. Tour. This is our mistake though guys. We can't have the tour to Amazon Jungle because we didn't do research on the vaccine. Yeah, so this is something we've just learned and we want to make sure, you know, most of the places you go, you're basically okay. But in some places, if you want to do certain things, or you want to travel to certain places, you need to make sure that if they require you to have a certain vaccine, that you get it prior to going. But anyway, you can it's learn It's our from mistake it. and it's your knowledge. So also, one of the reasons why we can't go to the Amazon jungle is because in order to have the vaccine that works, it requires a few weeks before your trip. So you can't just like expect that they will give you the vaccine and then a day later go to the Amazon sure, jungle. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work that, that way. I had the same issue when I was in the military. There was a series of shots because in the military they give you all sorts of shots, stuff to prepare you to make sure you're always covered. And like a certain shot that they would give us, you needed a series of four shots. They had uh, to be evenly spaced out. And if you missed one, mm -hmm. you had to start over. Got it, good knowledge. <laughs> so what has changed from the first year of travel to now? Uh, we now carry a large carry-on size four wheel luggage specifically because one you don't have to check it in i love it especially when we fly and we have to transit or go to the other airport or the other terminal for the connecting flight and when you have the limited time in order to catch the next flight having four wheel luggage make a big difference in this situation that you can rush through the crowd you just zigzag and zigzag. snake through people and you don't have to worry about dragging it behind you hitting somebody or just absolutely just slowing yourself down because you're dragging it. And another thing that I love in this situation is on the plane, in the narrow the aisle. aisle, you can just like put the luggage in front of you and just push it in front of you. So you don't have to drag it because when you drag it, it causes trouble to the people behind yeah. you as well and is not as comfortable and convenient as having the four-wheel luggage pushing in front of you. Not only the four-wheel luggage, but we specifically are talking about the large carry-on size. A lot of problems people have is they'll, you know, have a connecting flight and then they end up on their vacation and their luggage is missing. And that could take 24, 48, 36 hours to get your luggage back. So if you check out the large carry-on size, that's all we travel with. Yeah, we love having the carry-on, the back, the package, everything with us on the plane. So then all the time. Yeah, so then we don't have to like when we land and then we don't have to wait for the back. We just take an unknown factor out of it. Yeah. One, it getting thrown off the plane and damaged. Two, it getting lost. So if it's always with us, it's always safe. So when you are planning to travel, especially if you are planning to not only travel to one country, but you plan to also hit a nearby country or you plan to have long-term vacation, one thing you need to know is that each country relies on different plug type. And fun fact, there are up to 15 different plug types. Some of them come with special plug type that look pretty strange to us. Like for example, right now we are in Chile and believe it or not, instead of like the plug that go two dot like this horizontal it's like most country but it's three dot vertical also electric voltage in each country can be different yeah based on our own experience i know that nothing is worse than having an adapter and still not being able to use your electrical device like hair straightener hair dryer because the voltage is it, not correct not all devices are dual voltage some of them are only 120 and in some foreign countries they use 240 volts so septics is the adapter we carry with us not only does it come with adapter plugs for every single country but they've also made it super small and compact which is perfect for fitting in your bag and not taking up too much space 
They also offer a light on the front of the adapter that allows you to see if you're having 120 or 240 volts come out of the wall socket. It also comes with surge protector. protector. If something happens and the power goes out in your accommodations and all of a sudden it clicks back on in the middle of the night and you had no idea the power went out and your devices are plugged in, if it doesn't have a surge protector, it could actually fry all of your electronics that are charging, which for us, that's everything we carry with us <laughs> other than clothes. Another thing we love about it is also it's very sturdy when you plug into the wall. Like if you use MacBook, the charger is big. And when they plug into the bad power adapter, it falls all the time. So that's why another thing that we love about Simplex. You can check the description box below and we'll link you directly to the product. This kind of goes with the, uh, the luggage thing that we were talking about. We can't travel without having the packing cube nowadays. You. Well, the first year <laughs> we don't have the packing cube. We start to use it on the second year of yeah. traveling. Wow, simple but works magic. For me, I came from the military, so packing tight is easy. Like, I know how to roll all my clothes, make them very tight. Well, like hang on, even though <laughs> and you, it helps you. Well, even though you know how to roll your clothes, but if you roll all your clothes and you lay okay, them hang all. On, hang on. Sorry. We are in Chile right now and. There appears to be an emergency. <laughs> I mean, even though you roll the clothes, right? Then when you lay everything in the luggage, it's not as effective or neat as you have the packing cube because packing cube can like compress everything. Even more. 16 in one little cube. Also, it keeps your luggage very organized. Basically, I have two packing cube, so I set up different type of clothes then it's easier to find out what kind of clothes that you need it's really nice if you actually are like mid-trip you don't have time to do your laundry and then you're not mixing your dirty laundry and your clean laundry as well yeah so then you don't mix them up together like we used to do yeah. before it's horrible because we have to smell every single piece of clothes <laughs> in order to find out if it's dirty or if it's you're clean. not supposed to admit to that honey <laughs> We have the issue when we travel to some countries like Cambodia, to India, uh, to the Philippines. The remote islands in the Philippines. Yeah. yeah, we could not withdraw money or use our debit card. Based on what I know, if you are coming from America specifically... They're very secure about that. <laughs> yes. If some transaction happened in India, the bank will lock your card. Will lock your card and they would as soon as somebody steal your card. I don't know why it's India, but this is a really common issue. So you have to always, don't forget to call your bank to inform the, the specific country that you are traveling to. And honestly, I even suggest that you telling the bank maybe an extra country or two. If you even have that thought in your mind and you're like in an area where like, say you're in Southeast Asia or Asia and you can easily hop from one country to another, at any point in time, if the thought comes into your head that you want to possibly go see those countries, tell the bank that country as well because calling from Thailand to America is not as easy as telling them prior to your trip. So now let's talk about one of the most intimidating topics that honestly most people gamble with and they should not gamble with. Some countries though, like the cost of medical bills, the cost of hospital visit, just by getting consulting with the doctor, with the practitioner, like with the, the nurse US. is so expensive like for example when we're in in singapore yeah what you can do is is you can have a coverage like safety wing and safety wing covers you internationally and it's a month to month based subscription well the thing that i love about this is because like for example if you cut go to the country that the hospital visit would be expensive yeah. or the country that you tend to do like adventurous activity like philippines so then you can just decide to get the travel insurance just specifically during the period of time that you are in that country. We can't travel without downloading the transportation app in advance, even before we fly to that specific country. Don't rely on Grab or Uber, like some countries, especially in Asia, Southeast Asia. Or Colombia. Specifically. Yet, yeah, Uber is not available anymore. They have actually uh, just gotten rid of Uber in Bogota, in Colombia, all across the country, so there's no more Uber. 
So we can't use Uber anymore. But instead we download the app called Beat and Capify. And that is way better than Uber because it's cheaper. It's cheaper and you get a car way faster because there's more drivers using it. You have to do research in advance, like what kind of ride sharing, ride sharing app they use. So we can't travel without having the currency converter, sorry, yeah, the currency so converter application download in advance before we land. It helps a lot because you can walk right up to an ATM, mm. type in the amount of money you want in your local currency that you know and you're familiar with, and it'll give you the, the currency of the place that you're in. Our benchmark is always 100 US dollars. $100. Because one thing that we always avoid and we don't do it at all is exchanging money at airport kiosk. Never. And also like sometimes when we land in the airport right away we feel hungry or we feel like we need to buy water because we fly with budget airline and they don't serve us water. <laughs> so when we are in need of buying something so then we can know exactly like how much is this in, in our, our currency. Yeah. So I think this one's especially essential for me and something that I cannot personally travel without. It's probiotics. So having probiotics is extremely essential if you're going to a new country. So if you're trying all these different foods and these different recipes and these new spices that you're not used to, having a probiotic is absolutely essential. Especially I think if you plan to travel to the new continent because in each continent they have the specific spice and ingredient. Like for example, in India they have up to 100 kai of spice. Or you go to Thailand and you eat something and it's all chilies. <laughs> that will kill you. Probiotic is especially helpful for gastrointestine distress that also include like cramping, nausea, bloating, vomiting, and diarrhea, which is especially common when you visit somewhere new. Yeah. It can also improve digestion and increase natural immunities. So we need to talk about this topic. So just like the last topic, this topic is very essential to me. So it's activated charcoal. Activated charcoal comes essential when you're going to a destination full of street food. Like some country, the hygiene standard is pretty skeptical. So one of the specific problems I had, and it's very common for people in Indonesia, especially in Bali, they call it Bali belly, right? And I had it the last day that I was getting ready to fly to a new country. We were getting ready to fly from Bali to Vietnam and literally four hours before my flight, I came down with a fever. I was throwing up. I had the Bali belly and I had it bad. And activated charcoal helps settle your stomach for that situation. But you need to drink a lot of water with it so it can get all those toxins and the bad germs out of you. We started learning about that actually when Jimmy got sick on the plane and then flight attendant Gave us activated Yeah, charcoal. gave him activated charcoal. So then, after that, we start to realize that Jimmy can't travel without activated charcoal. I cannot. <laughs> Don't travel without having onward ticket if you plan to travel internationally. Yeah, so whenever you go to board a plane, like literally every time we've ever gone to get on a plane, I, I don't remember one time that they haven't asked for this. Every time they ask you, Okay, can I see your continuation ticket, your onward travel ticket? Especially if you are from developing countries, yeah. like me, from Thailand, getting to America. They, they want to make uh, sure you're going to leave again. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have learned that... You never travel without a dominant currency. For example, USD is pretty common. Euro. Yeah, I always have at least 20 bucks in my wallet. So what we encounter very often is the issue that, for example, the ATM in some country doesn't work at all. It happened to be broken or some airport, they don't have ATM there. Like for example, if you go to El Nido, Philippines, yeah, they have remote like one island. ATM on the whole island. <laughs> yeah, but and not in the airport. So then in that case, you can actually exchange the dominant currency. Most country, they have USD, Euro, they uh, accept it. Uh, Australian dollar as well that I see a lot. So that's why this come in handy when you need to exchange the money in case ATM doesn't work. We travel from Vietnam 
to uh, no, from Bali, from Bali to, to, Vietnam. to Vietnam. We can't exchange the rupiah in Vietnam. Yeah, same thing when we went from Lao to Thailand. Like we got to Thailand, we had a bunch of <laughs> Lao. bunch of Lao money left over, and we, we we couldn't exchange it. Like they wouldn't accept it. In some countries, the currency are quite weak there, and their money can be hard to exchange when you move on to another country. It's better to exchange a small amount of money that you have left over in the country before you leave the country. We have learned to not travel without having the pes prescription certificate. Yeah, if the pill we use required the prescription. But we've learned it because when my buddy Brad came all the way from the US and traveling for the first time in Asia, he went to Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka and a lot of Asian countries have a very strict policy when it comes to prescriptions and drugs, of course. And one of the things he carries on him, he has ADHD, so he carries Adderall. And that is quite illegal in Sri Lanka. So in order for him to travel with it, he had to have a letter from his doctor and a prescription certificate Did showing he that it? he needed it. Yes. Oh, he got it? Yeah, he, I mean, he oh, was he prepared for it. strict to the law. Like, <laughs> he does not want to be locked up in a foreign jail. <laughs> so he made sure he had all of his paperwork all lined up in case something were to happen and they were to ask him and see his prescription. You never know. You just don't want to be in the situation where you don't have it. Yeah, this also help also when you pass through immigration because sometimes they are so skept skeptical about the drug that you are carrying, especially in Singapore, they are so strict about what you are car carrying in the country in terms of medicine and pills. Or chewing gum. Or chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You can't chew gum in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, when you carry something like this, it's like a lot of space. A lot of space. So what we did on the first year of traveling, when we have like white men, when we have pill, we take the pill, put it in the Ziploc bag, so then it saves the space better than carrying the whole bottle. By all means, that does not look good. That, that doesn't look good but, at all. <laughs> but if you have it all labeled still, but if it's a prescription, you want to make sure you leave it in the prescription bottle so that they can see your name on it and the certificate for it. Yeah, it's always good to have it in the original package. And it's even better. Some some immigration, they even try to open it to see to see if see. they're all the same pill. Yeah, exactly. So basically, I always carry this. You can get this online for like sixteen dollars in the U.S. Uh, it's a full first aid kit, ready to go. So it has everything in it, <laughs> from bandages to dehydration salts to ointments to alcohol pads, uh, Q-tips. Um, Bandage. Everything, like huge stacks of bandages, band-aids. Like you just always want to make sure you're okay in every situation. Like if you were to crash on a motorbike out in the middle of nowhere, you at least are safe. You at least have what you need to get through that bad situation. It's gonna make a bad situation a little bit better. One reason that we can't travel without having this first aid kit as well is like for example, if you land in the country very early in the morning and pharmacy is closed. is closed or when you land too late at night and then you can't find the pharmacy or especially on the first day that you just like moving in the new and city you don't know where country. anything is yeah and then something happened, accident happened then you have the first aid kit for yourself do you realize like we always land in some specific country like too early in the morning or some too late at night flight. yeah for some reason i don't know why and then having this make us feel secure yeah feel safe feel comfortable this item that we can't travel without is the lightweight rain jacket so most rain jackets and windbreakers that you have you want to make sure it's waterproof if you plan on travel to multiple country, you have long-term vacation and plan to hit like several country, I think this one is so safe because you can get it covered. If you country. don't know the weather and how fast it's gonna change, right? Yeah. Unless you're local living there. Uh, it's so cold in Colombia in the morning. But then when it comes like in the noon time, it's getting hot like Asia. <laughs> so thank God that I break brand jacket. I hope it helped a little bit. <laughs> But you can actually walk up there. And that's why you see gentlemen like that getting ready for the, the plunge to the summit. Ready? And the waterproof is essential. 
because it will make you more comfortable in a bad situation. So one thing that we don't have on the first year of traveling and we start having on the second year is the, is the charging coop that we can't travel without. And you have a bunch of say electronics or computers or cell phones, like you're gonna need to charge multiple things at once. And this is a great option. And we actually just roll the cable up around it, throw some rubber bands around it, and it stays super compact. I don't like the one that is like long. Strip. That, how to call that? Charging strip. Charging strip is the one that I kind of don't like because it's like takes so much space. This has and USB three well. outlets and three USB ports. And it also comes with an additional surge protection. In some accommodations, they have like plug here, just one plug, and then a the plug on the opposite side of the place. Then, which if you wanna like sit together, work together, watch movie, do things together in the main table, then you can just have this one. It's also an extension cable. We don't travel without having Google Map offline download in advance. When I'm in a cab or I'm in a, a ride sharing app or any situation, I always watch where the cab driver's going to make sure that we're going in the right direction. We're not taking extra turns. We're not getting drove around in a circle. Mm -hmm. If you don't know a place and you're in a cab, not saying that this always happens, but it could ha you could be going in circles and you have no idea because you're new to the place and you don't recognize anything. Yeah. And not only when it comes to taxis, it's just good to have if you happen to not have service or you don't pay, get a SIM card yet. Having Google Maps offline is essential because you can see where you need to go without being connected to the internet. And it doesn't burn out your data as yeah. well. Alright, so that's all we have to share with you what we can't travel without and we encourage you to not travel without knowing or preparing those that we mentioned before. Yeah, so if you do have anything that we missed or you have anything that you can think of that we should carry in our bags or you think anybody else should carry, please let us know in the comments below so that, you know, we can help the community out and let everybody have the knowledge that we all have. That's, that's why we love this community is because we can share things with everybody. Exactly.